Hello and welcome back to Caves of Cud. We're going to be completing, I, I, I'm hoping we're going to complete a story quest today. Not a story quest, sorry. I guess a, just a, a quest, a normal quest. One that has been um, pre-made and not like a randomly generated one. So I'm kind of hoping for that. I think we have the Slinth quest, yes. Coding, Dromad Caravan, we have to return on that one. Pedals on the Wind, no. Uh, bu 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 bu. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, I don't know why I have that on my brain. Apparently we don't have a Slinth quest. I really thought we did. Why did I think we did? I don't understand. I do not understand why I thought we did. We do have to return to the, uh, maybe we do have, maybe it's not a quest. Maybe it's a location that we have to go to. Let me see. Let's look at our journal and then we're going to go to, let's check out, uh, named locations. Gunsmith. No, uh, settlements, maybe hydropon. There we go. We're going to the hydropon. It's in the palladium. Palladium Lake? I'm not sure what kind of lake this is. This is a Palladium Reef. Okay. So we're going to the Hydropond. This is something I've never done before. So this should be a lot of fun, maybe. Um, we seem to be on good terms with the Slinth. Let's talk to some Slinth. Do you talk long? Like Tha? The Slinth has nothing to trade. Um, okay. I'm a little bit, little bit nervous about this place, but... I, th I think we're okay. Let's gonna. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Not sure what is happening there. There's an interesting sound going on with uh, that reefy sound. I don't know. Uh, it's letting us take the books off the shelf. Okay, is there anyone to talk to? Doesn't seem to be. I've been told to come here. Like. Not just by the Slinth, but by other Caves of Cud players. They've said, you should go there. There's some interesting stuff there. You pass by an overgrown foam pad. Oh, which has one dram of sun slag. Tracery on the full right hem is melted bright white drips. White and drips onto the cracked foam pad. Lily sprouts quicken in the cracks and push forth life creeps outward. Um... Can we collect the liquid? I collected the liquid. Sun slag, as I understand it, is very valuable. So for me to just be able to collect it like that seems bizarre. New creature, live and drink. Nothing, nothing for me. Um, can we do anything with this? Cracked decorative vessel with fresh water. And then there's a melted reliquary. This seems to me like a tomb Seems to me this this has um, qualities of a tomb. Oh, wow. So this has a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, may, do know that if there... If, if this stuff was saying, are you sure? In any sense, I would not take it. But it seems like the Slinth are super cool with me taking their goods. Um, there doesn't seem to be anyone here who is like named or has a quest. I really thought there was more going on here. I thought there was a quest here, but it doesn't seem like there is. What is this? Briny algal, algal water. Plant-based effects to cooked meals. This is kind of bizarre. But, I mean, non-threatening and kind of just an amazing boon. It really doesn't seem to be a lot to do here. There's nothing else to do. There's no one else to talk to. There's no, like, people of note. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss, to be honest. Petal strewn, brine stock wa wall. I feel bad for robbing the slinth, I gotta say. Um, but like, it didn't say I was robbing them. They don't seem to care. I wonder if there's stuff planned for, um, this area that is not complete yet. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, so the sun slag, as I understand it, uh, if we drink it, 
or eat it. I, I don't know why. I, what do I have on my back right now? Worn on back, tar stain. Wait, what? We have two sets of mechanical wings? Apparently so. When did we get a second pair of mechanical wings? This is a strange run, I'll tell you that. For nothing. Um, I don't think compass bracelet uh, stacks. That being said, we were not wearing the compass bracelet. Okay, well, uh, I, I guess we're done here. Um, the slun slag, by the way, um, it's a food, I think. Is it a food? I think it might be a liquid. It's in the liquids. Uh, I believe it adds um, plus one to our DV. Look at, I don't know, we could like show effects. No active effects. I'm not sure. There's a there's a reason to drink Sun Slag. I can't remember why. Uh, well, you know what? Why not? Your quickness is permanently increased by one, and that's what's good about um, Sun Slag. It is, however, one of the most valuable uh, liquids in the entire game. So I could have sold it for a, uh, you know, pretty penny. Um, one quickness doesn't seem like a lot, but if you increase it enough, then basically you can perma kill anything in front of you like it's it really is like keys to the kingdom so um so i don't know if uh, named locations let's let's uh let's turn some stuff on and off let's get back to our mapped pins historic sites we want to uh unvisited on only so the only ones we know of are uh in <laughs> the deathlands and in the deep jungle. I, I won't be doing that, actually. I would not like to do that. I think what I would like to do, um, we don't have a lot of water. I think what I'll do is I'm going to go back home. Let's do shift R and then we're going to go ahead and um, go to Deva, but it doesn't have enough juice. Do we have another chem cell? Where is our energy cells? Okay, we've got one we can, we can put in. Um, I should have a way to, uh, charge my, my stuff. I'm not sure how to do that. I guess it would, I go to tools. Let me see here. Tools. Deva recoiler. Can I just, um, charge it with my, my ability? Doesn't look like I can. I don't know how to do that. So I'm just going to replace it with a chem cell and then activate it. That's, that's us transported all the way across the world, basically. Um, now I do need to hand in a quest. What? Who do I need to hand that into? Um, ba -ba -ba. Bimu. Bim handing in quests to name locations is, I believe, an achievement. So I would like to do that. Um, where is Bimu? That would be in settlements. I'm assuming Bimu. Four parasangs west, one north of the ruins of Jopa. Okay, there it is. We can buy some stuff there, or at least sell some stuff, because I, I am going to be in need of water pretty soon. Let's talk to our legendary croc and hand in a quest. I've located the Dromad Caravan. 500 XP is fine. Um, choose a reward. We could grab some um, interesting books, or some cells, or a bioscanning bracelet. I think the books are probably the best reward. And um, is there someone here we can sell to? Doesn't really seem like it, unless we can sell to you. Nope. Um, wow, okay. This place isn't great, actually. In terms of, like, a name location. Uh, nothing to trade. What, uh, have we made friends with you? Oh, loved by unshelled reptiles. We've probably made friends with you. They would teach me slaw warmth. Let's uh, let's figure out what slaw warmth is good for. Plus 11 max HP, plus 12 to natural healing rate. You thirst at half rate. Not a bad recipe. Uh, I, I'm good though. Uh, we need to make some money. So I'm going to go ahead and head back to our home. And I think what I might do just to pass, uh, get a little bit of, you know, minor um, progression here. Is I'm gonna take the Jopa crack. What's what's happening here? Okay, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna go into the Jopa crack um, mostly because there's uh, I believe a small sphere of negative weight there, and uh, that's always a good thing to to grab. We'll sell this ape fur hat. Um, always a good thing to to grab um, a negative sphere, and that'll that'll give us two actually. Oh, I mean in total, we'll have two in total. Um, we could sell that glow sphere. I do have this carbide folding hammer. I, I think I should equip that. I'm not sure why it's not equipped, if I'm being honest. I'll sell all this. So we have a nice abundance of, of water, which we should have basically at all times. Let's go ahead and check out, um, first of all, what this is. I'm yeah, shade injector. That's fine. Oh, a rifle. Um, we will be selling that. Laser pistol. Hey, not bad at all. Now, I know there's a way... I know there's a way to charge our goods with our electric, electrical generation, but I'm not sure how it works. Um, you can provide charge to equipped devices that have integrated power systems. Right, right. We need to get, um, we need to get the jacked mod. That is if I get into tinkering. Um, that'll allow us, wait, not jacked. It's a different one. Uh, I think you probably know which one I'm talking about. Um, I'm, I'm, Forgetting the actual name of it, but uh, basically it's a mod that we can um, modify our weapons with that lets it, us tap into our electrical generation. Really, really good. Um, let's. Uh, we have a bit, a bit of skill points. I wonder if maybe I want to. Do I have anything? All of the cudgel. I have. I don't have slam. Did I not? I guess I didn't have. I. I, I died on the run that I grabbed slam. Do we have 29 strength? I'm wondering if um, demolish is a skill that we're going to get. We're, we almost have 29 strength. So demolish is a, is a thing we will be able to have. So I'll grab slam. Not that it super matters. Um, I'm also going to grab... We already have tactful, which is great. Kind of want to grab uh, trash divining. That's going to make um, finding secrets a little bit more e easy for us. We could be go back down into Golgotha, or, but you know I have already spent some time in Golgotha and already got our <laughs> once per series disease, which is just great. Um, I don't know, let's, I was gonna go to the Jopa crack, but I, I guess this uh, ruins are, are highlighted. I'm really kind of in a loss. There's, um, oh, we've, we've already cleaned this place out. Okay, let's, let's go to our map pins and do ruins, unvisited on, uh, wait, did I do unvisited on only? Unvisited on only. There we go. All right, so none. All right, cool. Let's go to the Jopa crack. Uh, oh, you noticed some ruins nearby. Perfect. That's what we want. I know I'm like kind of all over the place right now. It's really just because I'm I'm trying to find some safe progression that also kind of ties in to um, achievements. By the way, I, I, I don't think I answered the person directly someone asked me about books i've been reminded by this question because i am picking up books as we speak here what is the point of hoarding books i have answered this question before uh, a couple of different times but um you know there's always new viewers and and such um the reason you collect books is because like and, and not give them in right away is because books are a flat um, hand in like they're gonna give you say a hundred or two hundred XP that does that number doesn't change from level one to level two to level 30 right that that specific book is going to give you a specific return and therefore it uh, not handing it in um, doesn't cost you anything now it's fair to say that um, experience in the early game is going to be worth more to you that is to say it's going to level more be more likely to level you up um than it is in the late game however um as you level up there is kind of diminishing returns on how much xp you get from creatures when you kill a creature you know you, it, it, how much xp you get is relevant uh is in relation to how much you um Oh, sorry, what level you are, right? So therefore, as you get higher and higher level, you're going to have to kill 
harder and harder creatures. Also, I just realized we should go and get the, um, I think I, did I look at this shrine? I did, but I don't think I looked at the shrine up here. Always important to do this. Where is the shrine? I'm not seeing it. Is there no shrine up here? Oh, there it is. Did I already look at this? Oh yeah, Mupiter. So, um, what I'm saying is that, like, around level 25 to 30, in order to start, act like, actually get some experience, um, or meaningful experience, you're gonna have to kill some insanely hard things. And, like, they're, they're just as tough in the late game, some of them, than they are in the, in the early game. Well, not, not fair to say. They'll kill, they'll wipe you out in the early game, but... I think I did actually answer this question like really recently, so I'm probably repeating myself. No worries. So I am doing the Jopa Crack. The Jopa Crack is something you should probably always do on uh, a run. It's sometimes it can be the first thing you do. I don't think that that is necessarily a bad idea. It is of course a super risky idea, but um, you know I wouldn't I wouldn't fault you. Oh, got some spine fruit jam. We're getting some um, trash, and we that's gonna be extra good for us because it's potentially worth some secrets. I'll take the bandage. I don't know why I'll take the bandage, but I'll take the bandage. In the early game, um, this Jopa Crack journey can, it can be very spicy. There can be the occasional slug snout, for instance. There can be a, uh, uh, slumberling slumberlings aren't too bad so long as you know what not to do but i've been finding more often um, in my cud career that they tend to find a way of waking up like there always seems to be something on the floor that wants to jar them awake so my rule of thumb when i see a slumberling is uh just leave it the heck alone and like get, get a far as far away from it as possible kill anything that's near it because, you know, if the enemy, you know, your enemies are not smart, right? Magnetize boots. Okay, I need, I needed to do something here. I needed to switch my weapons because I have a folded carbide hammer. And uh, now we have, we, we actually have a pretty good set of weapons now. Plus we have that amber tip staff. I don't know if, um, is the steel better no it's not so we might as well continue with our amber tips staff um your enemies are not smart and if they are like mad at bears for instance they'll like take it out on a slumberling they're like i hate bears you know snap jaws don't like bears they're just gonna you know every snap jaw that you see on the floor if they see that slumberling they're gonna go right for it and they're gonna piss off the slumberling, punch them awake. And then they become your problem, basically. Because now they're awake and they're grump. They're grumpy as heck. They're 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 turbo grump, you know, like so now you have a, a very grumpy bear awake and looking for blood. Looking for your blood, basically. So um slumberlings they're, they're a problem. And in the early game, they can be uh, basically a, a very early game run, uh, run ender. Okay, we've got a legendary snap jaw. Hated by the villagers of Darapir. Hated by, disliked by the villagers of Dar Samaz. Uh, they have a freezing bronze dagger. Loved by snap jaws. Seems like a good... Um, Snapjaw to murder. All right, we have Lays. I forgot about that. Dead. Something is throwing grenades of some kind. Ooh. Prize Devotion's Comrade Tree's Favor. Uh... Interesting, and we uh, discover the location of Dugapad. Maybe that that would be a good next location to go to and acquire this devotion weapon. 
Oh, possibly not a weapon. Well, there's a slumberling. Can we dis let's let's murder them? They are we have basically um, like perma stunning abilities. So by the way, um, talking about hoarding things in Caves of Cud, uh, someone is undoubtedly going to ask me the question, why is it that I have 14 mutation points and I'm not spending that? That's a fair question. I'm surprised no one has asked me honestly. Uh, the reason being is this is something I like. I am planning eventually to do my mutants um, tutorial video, and it is something I kind of want to cover. Is the idea of basically um, I don't know how to put it, leveling up or staggering your level up uh, for mutations so that you can consistently um, keep them at max level. I'm not smart enough to really do the math on it, but it's. Um, something I read about there's a really good tutorial about how to balance your physical and mental mutations um, and it kind of relies on the idea that um, if your physical mutation is too high level then you can't rapid advance it so uh, it, it's really just like if you want to like use your rapid advancements to um, progress a specific mutation rather than uh, you know, rather than spread yourself out too thin, then then you basically want to hold back a little bit on spending your mu your your mutations. That being said, thermal grenade, nice. Um, I'm not doing it correctly, so it's a totally fair question of like, well, you know, that you hoard a little bit, not all of it. Um, I gotta figure out basically the the actual correct math. It's a scaling problem. It's like something basically every time you level, you can kind of spend a couple of points here and there. Um, I'd have to like figure out exactly how much it is to play it, you know, balance it optimally. And it's kind of, I mean, once you have it figured out, then I can imagine it's a really easy thing to keep track of and remember, maybe, if you're someone else. <laughs> um, but for me specifically, uh, I, it's exactly the kind of thing I find really difficult to remember and it's one of the many reasons why I'm not a huge fan of uh, optimization. When I say optimization, I mean like playing optimally in a uh, stats kind of stats based RPG. So uh, I like bigger number better. That's my play style. Um, it means that I'm not going to ever be uh, a very good Caves of Cud player. I'm comfortable with that. I am comfortable with that. It, at the very least, I don't aim to be the best. I just aim to be entertaining. This moth fellow is really... Oh, there's another one. Oh my god. I'm really glad I'm doing this now and not like 10 levels ago. Is that other moth also dead? Seems like... Seems like the case. Um... So, but you may have noticed, like, I'm putting all of my points into Temporal Fugue. This is, the other thing is, like, for this specific run, I'm trying to go for specific achievements. Um, and in order to do that, I wanted to put as many points into Temporal Fugue as possible in order to get the clone-based achievements. That is kind of the focus of this run. Uh, there, that be, you know, therefore, I didn't really want to spend any or all or, you know, uh, levels or mutation levels on m like m you know my other mutations speak words eloquently hard it is um, so you know that's kind of my explanation I'm killing I'm I am letting two birds live without throwing any stones by not spending my mutation points so that I can both uh, power level temporal fugue as well as use my rapid advancements to level up multiple arms and multiple arms is going to be like my main uh, physical mutation it's going to really kind of I, I love multiple arms it's probably my favorite uh, physical mutation I'd like to learn how to like abuse or exploit other mutations 
but for now it's been like kind of my a1 pick winner uh of all time i i love it i seriously love it so much wet brim wet wide brimmed hat we don't need that no i don't want that give me the pizza no i don't want that i want the bread no i don't want that there you go there's your uh uh <laughs> unlocked deep memory for the uh, episode so i believe this was oh no that's an amiibo corpse Oh, wait a minute. That looks like it right there. Ancient bones, a corpse. I think that we did get our um, negative weight sphere. Yeah, we have two of them now. Nice. Okay. So, we can now leave. Oh, I don't know what we have here, but I don't care. And, you know, just for novelty's sake, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go the long... Well, I say the long way, but basically it's the the normal way i'm gonna go up red rock there is a there is a staircase down we could you know keep going keep the keep this business going let's go ahead and absolutely demolish a slumberling very very um like satisfying killing a slumberling honestly um so we have some more skill points and we leveled up if we leveled up we should be able to upgrade our temporal fugue maybe yes there it is Temporal Fugue is actually probably being held by, back by the fact that uh, we have such high ego. It'd be one of those things, if we could find an item that gave us negative ego, um, then that would be ideal, because then we could level up uh, Temporal Fugue and then take the items off, so then our Temporal Fugue would be high level. But it doesn't really matter, because... Um, I don't think you get the benefits of a of like exploiting that. Like I'm pretty sure it just gets capped out by how high a level you are. I will say a lot of my um, knowledge is kind of jumbled up a little bit when it comes to the the very granular details of Caves of Cud. It all kind of blends together a little bit. Certain uh, certain things, like for instance, uh, mental mutations, are they restricted um, by ego or by level? Maybe both. It could be both. This is why I, I'm not a very good min-maxer and I don't tend to make very overpowered characters. I do know what I like though, and I know how, you know, I know what's fun for me. So if you tell me, well, hey, if you take double muscled and, uh, you know, conk and bludgeoning attacks and multiple arms and temporal fugue then you'll basically be an unstoppable blender of destruction then i'll tell you hey that sounds like fun risk calc what does the risk calc do um, when equipped and powered it provides 10 units of compute power to the local lattice when equipped and powered this item grants a bonus to identifying artifacts as if your intelligence score was increased by two well, that seems f nice. I, I don't know. Sure, we'll equip that. Electrified whatever. Sounds good. I love some of the sound effects in Cud. We were having a... There was a small discussion in the comments about what is a feature and is sound, sound effects a feature? Um, I asked the question, are sound effects a feature? And I think that most people agreed that yes sound effects are a feature and i definitely think like art like the art and style for a game um sound effects can absolutely make or break a game and you know make it either either enhance it or um you know kind of dumb it down um i like the sound effects in cud i've always liked the sound effects in cud i think it's fair that sound the sound effects in cud have kind of gotten the job done that like, and there's a weird kind of story about the sound effects in Cud because as I understand it, some of them are, um, I don't know, not public domain, but they are kind of public assets. They were not specifically made or custom made for Cud. Um, this is a theory not actually confirmed. I couldn't say one way or the other, but it's a theory based on the fact that I've heard Caves of Cud 
sound effects in other games. It might even be that it's their Unity sound effects. Because I know that uh, Caves of Good is built in Unity. This is one of those things where I don't like to th theorize because, um, you know, I'm going to get called out for it. Um, and it's going to sound like I'm insulting the game when I'm not. Or I guess it's more like I don't like to necessarily spread misinformation on something like this. But it's a, it's a theory. I think it's a pretty good one. Got some info. Oh, we got a new uh, historical site. So yeah, uh, his, uh, sound effects, are they a feature? Um, it seems like consensus says yes, sound effects are a feature. And it seems like people are very happy with the new sound effects in Caves of Cud, which is great. Um, you know, I think Caves of Cud has to be one of the most incredible examples of like, they've done no wrong. You know what I mean? Like, um, like a lot of games that you, you know, you buy a game and you know, we could say for the sake of argument that Caves of Cud is in early access. I think that it is technically in early access, but I think also that, you know, you can say it's, it's not finished yet, right? Um, if you're like me, you've probably played a lot of games, um, that are in early access. This seems like something we could disassemble because I don't think I'm going to make use of this. Let's go ahead and do that. I know it's a very good weapon, but I don't think I'm going to make use of it. Um, I'm just looking for things to, to you know, get rid of to save us a bit of room. Um, and like, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I would say I haven't been a Caves of Cud fan for all that long. You know, it's been a, kind of one of those things I've warmed up to and then eventually it becomes a fascination and eventually it becomes an obsession and eventually it becomes like, you know, one of my favorite things ever. But like, um, I, in the grand, like in the uh, lifespan of Cud, I am, I am very late in the game. You know, like, uh, it's like, oh no, you know what? I'm not going to make that analogy because that would just be probably not, not met with, um, do I have an, a glow sphere equipped? I don't. What am I using right now? How am I seeing? How am I seeing? Like. Oh, I see. I have Kaladicus Mupiter Brune. Is this a... Does this shed light? It's... It lumi oh, Chunk of the Luminous Spindle. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I'm, like, able to see right now. I am shedding light. Um, hmm. I have to dr shed some weight. Small stone. Oh, we have... We got a recoiler for a place. I don't know. Oh, wait, no, that's probably... Oh, my God, a nuclear cell. Um, that was probably the the place I, I handed in that quest for, maybe? You could let me know. I know I'm all over the place right now. In fact, uh, whatever I was talking about is long gone. No, it's not long gone, sorry. Um, I know that I'm, I'm a latecomer to Cud in the grand scheme of things, but, like, ev seriously, every single, um, like, update, upgrade that has been done for Cud has been, like, a winner. I have never seen a misplay by the CUD devs. They know exactly what kind of game they're making and they've been making it well. I know that people, like there, there's um, a little bit of uh, divisive opinions about certain things, uh, namely some of the story quests, um, people are, you know, find them frustrating. Personally, uh, I'll say this about the mid to late game is uh, I have really enjoyed them um, once you get to know that Cud is not really like other roguelikes and is more like an open world sandbox than it is, uh, you know, anything else, then, you know, it becomes like something really incredible and it doesn't be, you know, the st whether or not you play the storyline is not really of much concern. I think the mo a lot of the people who get the most out of Cud are playing it, um, as like an open world RPG more than anything think of it more like um almost like skyrim than um you know like a linear linearly driven 
RPG. Like, the story is great, and I'm looking forward to Moonstair, but I don't, uh, I don't think that the, the dungeons necessarily are why I, I come to Caves of Cud anymore. But nonetheless, you play the, you do the, the, you explore the game um, for the sake. Did I take both of those things? I didn't mean to do that. Let's drop some stuff. I don't, uh, you know, I, I, I do the, the little random explorations so I can complete the dungeons. And, you know, I think that a lot of people struggle with the, the, the main storyline because they tend to, to take on more than they can chew at any given time. And that certainly lends a lot to the difficulty of Cud. Um, it's a really easy thing to do, and uh, you know it can it can feel overwhelming, and it can feel like there's you know there's it, it's being it's not playing fair. And I actually totally get that. I don't think that that's necessarily unfair. Um, anyway, I'm going to check out some of these name locations in the next episode. And, uh, you know, if you're enjoying this series, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.